Put yourself in position to win big on Kentucky Derby Day with the power of daily racing form. Visit shop.drf.com and get past performances, expert picks, betting strategies, clock reports, and more. Again, that's shop.drf.com. Dan Ullman, Mike Buer, taking a look at the second of two graded stakes races at Belmont Park on Friday. Race number eight is the grade three Westchester. It's the local prep for the prestigious Metropolitan Mile, and it's a race for older horses going a one-turn mile. Before we take a look at the field, remember to subscribe to the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel. Lots of handicapping analysis this Kentucky Derby week. Here's the field for the grade three Westchester. Really notable name uh, coming off of the layoff. That's the number seven Zandon. The four wide of Mario has scratched. He will run on Saturday at Churchill Downs. Getting back to Zandon, it's his first start of the year, Mike, but he ran third in the Kentucky Derby. He won the Bluegrass. He was third in the Travers. It was a lot of close but no cigar finishes. I kind of like the fact that Chad's kind of trying to turn him into a miler. Yeah, I do too. I, I think um, ultimately, I feel like this, you know, races maybe up to a mile or so are going to be his, his wheelhouse as an older horse. And we'll see how it all plays out. It's, it is interesting, though, to look at his three year old campaign. He ran so many good races um, against the best of that three year old crop, and he came away with one win. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector because it could be argued when he faced elders in his final start of the year, the cigar mile, that he was compromised a little bit by pace. And you see Zandon at the back of the pack in this pace projector where it favors front runners. Now, Rita Barrio will be taken out. Once scratches are made official, head on over to timeformus.com. This pace projector will update. How much trouble will Zandon be in if this pace projector comes true? Um, I don't, you know, personally, then when I looked at the race and I do really feel like there's a chance that this pace won't be very fast. I don't really see why um, it would be some kind of big issue for Zandon. I realized that he's not, you know, a speed horse. I've never looked at him like a horse who had to be last early if they're not going in front of him. Number one is Bourbon Calling, and this horse has been on fire since being claimed for $32,000 last year. He's won three in a row, all at the mile distance, all at Aqueduct, but he ran fast in this race. This is where he's offered for an $80,000 optional tag, and he'll pop a 100 buyer speed figure, Mike. This horse is just going the right way right now and now gets the big class test. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're going to try him in one of these races, you might as well do it now. Um, all three starts so far for these connections are really good. This is the best one yet. It's not against, you know, the level of competition that he's going to be seeing on Friday. Um, so we'll see if he can up his game one more time. Dan. He's been good for a long time. He's never been better than this. The number two is Express Man, going out for trainer Todd Pletcher. Very lightly raced, a lot of upside potential. Five starts, never off the board. Tested for the first time for class last time in the Carter Handicap. Didn't have the cleanest trip, ran okay. I can see him taking a step forward. He's going to have to. He's yet to run back to that giant buyer in his debut last year at Saratoga. Yeah, going to be interesting to see if he can ever even get close to that. Um, I'll say this about him. Not only does that pace projector... Uh, really work uh, in his favor in this race, Dan. I thought he ran a deceptively good race in the Carter last time. I know the Carter's not the grade one race that it used to be. I don't even feel like the field this year was that strong. This horse ran great in there. That pace was really, really fast. He was up close, contesting it up the back stretch. He dropped back a little bit on the turn, but he came again, and he was in the mix uh, down through the stretch there before the closers came and got him. This horse ran an underrated race last time. Up next is the Graded Stakes debut for the number three, Dr. Ardito. This is a New York bred, trained by Chad Brown. All he's done is win six in a row, including this effort in his stakes debut against fellow New York breds, the Haynes Field. There was a big pace battle going on in the early portion of this race. Dr. Ardito made a wide bid on the turn outside of the salty veteran banquet, and they really throw it down and put on a show the last eighth of a mile. Dr. Ardito just getting the measure of banquet. He's run solid figures in his career he does have some upside potential now we're going to find out how good he really is yeah that's how i looked at him too i mean it's pretty hard to knock and you're gonna the, all the races that he's run that six race winning streak they kind of just look like that one dan he's not gonna blow you away with his performances but he's just a real determined horse he gets himself involved and he doesn't give an inch through the stretch we'll see if he can i think he's got to improve to beat this field we'll see if he can do it 
White Barrio expected to scratch. So we'll move on to the number five. That's Unbridled Bomber. This horse has won three out of his last four starts. And he looked good last time out, coming off a short layoff. One turn mile against Allowance Company at Aqueduct, where he was able to stay up close to the pace. But it's over by the time they hit the 316th, and he pours it on the final eighth of a mile. This is very impressive. It comes back fast, and you're right, a little bit of a different running style for him here, too. I mean, he's never been a, a slow plotter anyway, but there are races where the paces are fast, and they just sort of take him back, and he makes a run from off it. This time, they just went with him. Um, he just absolutely smashed this field, Dan. It was a, it was nice to see him rebound because they gave him a little bit of a test two back in the Queens County. He wasn't really up for that, um, but he was in really good form before the Queens County, and then he came back last time with an even better race. I think he's pretty dangerous in here. Wayburn has been an underrated horse for an underrated horseman in Jimmy Jerkins for a long time. He won the Gotham back in 2021. And in this race, he successfully defended his title in Gulfstream's Sir Shackleton going seven eighths of a mile, a race in which he parked himself outside. He's going to get himself into a little bit of a battle here in mid stretch. And he likes a fight, Mike. He's able to punch on home and win by a neck. Yeah, he's pretty game here to get the job done. I like this performance from him. I thought he ran well uh, two starts back too, Dan. Off a long layup there against White Abario. That was a, a pretty good performance also. He's just a rock-solid horse. I you know, I don't know if you agree with this or not. I kind of feel like he's probably a little bit better going seven furlongs than he is this one-turn mile. You did mention that he, he did win the Gotham as a three-year-old at a, some kind of huge price, and he ran well that day. I still think he's a little better going a little shorter. Here's Zandon making his first start of the year, and he's the horse to beat based on the speed figures he earned last year in races like the Jim Dandy, the Travers, and the Pennsylvania Derby, all triple-digit buyer performances. In the Cigar Mile, he was beaten at odds on. It was a sloppy track. I'm not sure he loved the slop. I'm not sure he just loved the fact that there was a really slow pace on in that race, and there's a chance maybe it was one race too much for him after a long and testing season. I think all those things could be true, Dan. Yeah, I just sort of looked at him when I watched that cigar mile back. He, he just, to me, he didn't really seem like a horse who loved the wet track. It was just kind of a mild performance there, but he was still trying down to the end there. I think a fast track will help him. I mean, it's at least worth pointing out that he was entered um, to make his comeback in an allowance race last week. The track came up sloppy that day, so they scratched him. So who knows if he's going to need a race here off the layoff. But um, I think it's pretty clear from his past performances. If he shows up ready off the layoff, he's going to be really, really hard for this field to beat. And completing this field, the number eight is Repo Rocks. And all he did three starts back is win the grade to Toboggan with a 111 buyer speed figure. I'm not exactly sure where that race came from, but he has been in sensational form over the winter for the high percentage trainer, Jamie Ness. He then came back and won the Stymie, despite having a little bit of trouble. And then here he is in the Carter handicap. Last time out where he was beaten at odds on, Repo Rocks is on the outside in this race. Expressman is going to finish third after getting into a little bit of trouble. Repo Rocks is going to kind of grind his way on for second, but you never got the feeling he was winning yeah you didn't and th again this is a race that had a really fast pace in front of him and he was off of it he's coming down the outside here that's express man right to his inside they're going to duel for the leftovers because the longest shot on the board is coming from last to close this race down i mean listen repo rocks ran fine in here um and he's got you know a race or two on the go back that would make him really tough in this race too i'm not betting him in here dan but he could easily win Let's take a look at our top selections for the Westchester. It's a very important prep for the Metropolitan Handicap. Mike, you're going with Zandon. He's the class. He's got the fast races. Chad runs him well off the layoff. And like you, I kind of think he has enough tactical speed to adapt if the pace is slow. Yeah, I, I do feel that way. I mean, obviously, he's good as a deep closer, but I don't think he has to be that far back. Then I think his good race is too good for this field, so I took him on top. Um, I'm pretty interested to see what we get from Unbridled Bomber stepping up again because he was good last time, and I got Express Man in there. His, his most recent start was pretty good. A lot of respect for Zandon. I want to see if he might need one off of the layoff before the Met. Dr. Ardito, listen, he's got to go off for me between six and eight to one. This is a giant class test for him. I like that he outgamed Bankit last time out, but Bankit would likely be a pretty big price in this field. 7562 for Mike, 3761 for me. It's the Westchester, and it's a good addition of the Westchester on Friday at Belmont. Good luck.